Today I'm doing a, an hour-long review um, of most of the chapters we've covered, um, largely excluding plants because we did that um, one week ago. Um, and I'm also driving this session with um, the teaching of, of lab reporting in mind. So we'll be doing a little bit of both. I'll be trying to um, prepare you for the practical and demonstrating um, examples of what you can put in lab reports. So I'm going to share one of my applications. And you're going to see a bunch of little squares, and these are all examples of, of specimens we've been looking at. Um, so I'm, I'm throwing all this at you at once, and there are um, a number of things that you can do with all of this to study. For one, I'm going to quiz you. You don't have to answer. Um, in fact, it, don't, don't answer because I will hear the little beep, and then I'll wonder if there's been a signal interruption and I'll, I'll rush out and go check on it. But uh, so th this is for you um, to do independently. So real quick, and this is from last week. What is this thing? It's organ. It's um, it's got a name. It starts with an R. It's for rasping. Things like algae or decaying tissue off of another animal that could eat some lettuce, it could eat some grass, um, and it is from a mollusk. And the significance of it, besides its function, is that all mollusks share an ancestor that had these. So they were lost along the way um, with clams because they didn't need them anymore. So I still haven't told you the name of the thing. And try and get try and figure out what kind of mollusk it is from um, and get as close as you can to naming it. So reducing what is that we'll let you look at it for a second a hint is that it is vastly different from this so different that they are in different phyla which means that that split in the tree runs incredibly deep. So even though these are both gelatinous sea creatures, they diverged. Uh, uh, I, I wish I had the some numbers handy, but it, at the very least, maybe 400 million years ago, but probably longer, probably older than that. So these two things, kind of similar lifestyles, um, different phyla. So the closest that you'll have to get um, in terms of identifying something like this, and you, you could see a picture of a jar, perhaps. I'm getting my pen on board um, is So phylum, you want to know the phylum of this um, as well as the phylum of this. With this, you may need to get more specific. Um, and I'll, I'll write this one out for you. This is a moon jellyfish. And the phylum is Cnidaria. This phylum is 
So something you can do um, to help yourself with the lab exercise. So now you have these, um, these two creatures and you can address telling them apart. So um, this is covered in cilia. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let's see, draw a touch, yeah. in Pinafra. Um, so you infer from this that the Cnidarians have the tentacles bearing the mitocytes. So I've told you, I've written what Tinafra lacks. Um, and then you can add another note, like you can just do a bullet in as as a lab entry and another bullet says um that it can address something they do have comb jellies Whole body, cilia, on the comb lines. Use for movement, and as is often the case with with Celia, um, it helps a little bit with um, filter feeding. And you can say things like "probably" because um, this is the information you have. You have a bunch of specimens in lab, um, and the if the scientist in you starts to make inferences and ask questions, then um, it's working. The lab is working and, um, and, and you are functioning the way we would like you to function in there. Um, so, and probably, um, probably a vet's filter feeding.
I'm writing mouth opening because I don't know if it's a if it's a true mouth. We've got a lot of words for mouth. Um, so just to so I can stay in my lane, I'm writing through mouth opening. Um, but you but you know, I'm not gonna I'm not concerned with vocabulary that specific unless we give you another word for it, which which I'm not doing here. Um, I just heard a noise that makes me wonder if the connection is still going. Uh, so I'm gonna pause and check that for a second. And we are still live, great. Um, all right. Um, so then this can be accompanied by um, teen of four, let's say. I do want to try with my other with my other pen application. One second. Okay. I have a lot of I have a lot of text sitting here right now. Um, so the comb. There's this um, sort of mouth opening. This is the basic body plan. Um, and so it'll sort of drift. Then let's look at Aurelia. So this is a different plan. This has a bell. So propulsion spurts. These are reproductive organs. These have very, 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 very short tentacles. And their stings are not, they don't mean much to human. Um, so there is a lot to learn and remember about, um, about Nigerians versus Tinoferans. But here's the thing, for your lab, um, if this is all you write um, and you have something where you really make a point, it shows you've thought about it um, a little bit, you 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 can move on now um, and and not discuss not discuss this again. Um, so I'm I would organize it a little better. Um, so so let's see that that took that took just a couple of minutes. Um, so if you, so, you know, but I've been doing this for a while, so let's, let's just double that time um, and think about how many chapters there are. You'd have a, um, a couple of these per chapter times 13 minus the, the, um, the seed lab that we missed. Um, and I know that the Dr. Baker wants us to be pretty forgiving. Um, it's where if you, 
barely address a lab here and there, um, then that's okay. Um, so it, it shouldn't take you um, an extremely long time, but it should take you hours. Um, at, at an hour a unit, maybe half an hour a unit. Um, but if you produce something like this, and this is all you give us, even though it is not a complete um, set of set of information for um, uh, for the the content, that's okay. We we just want to see that that you can do this um, and that you you've had a moment of practice. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna snap a picture of this. Um, all right, and I heard the sound of somebody asking something. Professor, what will the general format of the practical be like? Um, never done a digital practical before, but um, you'll be shown things like you could get uh, all that that. So uh, Aripa, that's sort of what I'm what I'm going over today. Um, like I can't really explain that in a sentence or two. Um, so so that's one of the things I'm. I'm, I'm imparting today. Will you be given a review sheet for the practical? Nope. Um, that, that's something that, uh, well, maybe you'll be given one in lecture, but not in lab. Um, okay, so now I'm going to shrink all that and move on and give you another example. Yeah, pretty sure I have to delete it. Oh well. Okay. So now I'm gonna move on. You could get a picture like this and get the question just what is this? What is this thing? Is it unicellular? Is it a protus? Is it like here? It, is it a, a developing uh, plant embryo? Is it a seed? Uh, is it a moss spore? Um, the answer is that it's a diatom. diatom. So protist and um, oops. Let's see. Protus. So, so how can we recognize this? Um, so diatoms are um, so you could get a slide that will have um, it won't be all blue like this, but it will um, have examples like these. They'll be like squid rectangles, things that look like this, things that have points, um, but they're going to be highly symmetrical, just just not not the other. It's they're just they're just different. They'll have lots and lots of lines, um, and you may you could write in your lab notes. Um, diatoms, so they're highly geometrical, um, 
geometric. They're single-celled, obviously, because they're protists. Um, something important about them is that they are um, photoautotrophs. So you can, imp uh, for your notes, you can implant a picture like this and just write some things about it, um, a little bit of, of conversation with yourself um, would be good. Um, uh, with a picture like this, I would use a lab report to note um, something that we learned. And even if we can't see it um, with our technology, silica shell. Um, so this whole All of this is a silica shell. It makes them kind of hard. They comprise, they make up sand. Hey, I heard a question. I hope it's directly relevant because every time I have to go over, um, when will this be due? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it's up to, it's up to Dr. Baker probably very close to the practical day of the practical or after the practical i believe it's it's may 13th um you you can definitely def you're welcome you can definitely send me um a draft if you'd like um so all right so that was a little bit about diatoms oops now I'm going to get rid of that. And I get lost. And we'll move on to something else. And I'm going to save it because we may want to do something else with it later. OK, so I'll bring up another critter. That, what is this? So there are um, questions that you could be you could be shown an image like this and be asked, what is this thing? Um, what's the phylum? Is it um, an acelomate, a pseudocelomate, or a coelomate? How does it move? I'll let you think about that for a second. And if you want to check out, check out your notes to identify this. Okay, so this is planaria. I'm writing planaria species. Um, so that's the the genus. So it's yeah. You're not going to be asked what genus is this. 
Um, but you could be asked, you know, what is this? Um, so you can say planaria, and that's a lower level. It is also this, turbularian. Flatworm. Um, so, and back to this thing, what is that? Um, so for lab practicals, you may get something like this, um, and you'll be asked a couple of questions, like perhaps what phylum, and that would be turbularia. Um, uh, what is the, the, the lowest um, taxic name that you can get to for this animal? And you can say planaria or planarian. Uh, flatworm is, I of course give you some credit for that. Um, and then you get another question for the same station. What is this thing, pharynx? Um, what is its function? Um, and whenever, Whenever there's a, a pharynx, there's going to be thing. It's going to be mouth-like, so it's protrusible. Um, so there are other other pieces that um, that we we ask you to learn for planarians. So now I'm going to get rid of all this and proceed as if I am doing a lab report entry about it um, that would include the important bits that we've talked about in class. So let's see. So turbularian. Body plan. It has a plan. So they have this same basic shape. They look cross-eyed. They're quite adorable. When I first heard about these in a book called Pets in a Jar that um, I found when I was a kid, I was just, I wanted one so bad. I was desperate to find one. I was told they were everywhere. Um, and it was a while before I could find one. They live in ponds. So eye spots. If you're asked to identify these, don't call them eyes. Um, that, that won't help you. They're eye spots, which are clusters of photosensitive cells, which could become an eye later on. So now we're going a layer under its skin. Um, and it has, like the starfish that we looked at yesterday, it has some overlaying stat organ systems. So it has um, a layer. And I'm removing, I'm drawing X situ. So the red is a system, the green is a system and did I pick a new color? Yes. Blue.
in the system. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to do the, the reproductive stuff. Oh, and I, I think I forgot to make this a little better. So this is my lab entry for Planarian. So you can, um, in doing this, you'll you want to learn um, a couple of things um, so that you can identify a diagram. Like say say you got um, a a diagram of of a very well stained um, like. Let's see, let's look at this. Um, it may take me a moment to find the animal, but I put it, ah, okay. So say you got something like this. So this is not planaria, this is dugasia. It's another type of, um, of, plat, of planarian flatworm. And it has, um, and it has a, a couple of, um, of systems. Here it looks a bit blended together, um, but you can, but you could get a slide where, it, where it's different. Um, and you may need to identify, it's hard to see, but there is something here, and you may get one that's stained that stained a little better, that goes across. We may want you to address this. So you, should, you can be thinking now if you don't already know, all right, well, what does this thing need to accomplish? Um, it has to have a digestive system. We know it's an acelomate, so um, it, it doesn't have a, um, like a mouth to, it, it, it doesn't have a system that's going to, to package, absorb nutrients, and deliver it everywhere it needs to go. Um, it's sort of every part of the body for itself, um, which is the same for oxygenation, too. Um, if you starved one part for oxygen, um, if you manage to do that, um, then the cells are in, at the separation would die. Um, so they have the blue. Um, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll just tell you off the bat. The blue is nervous um, uh, nerve nerve cells. Yellow mm, color and thickness. I'm gonna use a pen. The purple. It also has an excretory system. which is a bit on top of the green, which by now you may have guessed is digestive. So it's no surprise that this pharynx leads right into all the digestive stuff. So that this pharynx protrudes, and we saw that in the previous slide. Um, right here. So this pharynx comes out, food, it, it grabs food, the food goes in, and it distributes through the digestive system, um, which is, um, which is the green. Um, here I've made it red. Um, and then Okay, and then uh, it excretes in the same area. So digestion, excretion, oxygen absorption, 
um, and nerve response can happen anywhere in the same place. So if you cut this part, this will likely survive and this will likely survive. Um, and it has the ability to, to regenerate a pharynx. So those are some features of a planar platform. Um, so you can do something like this. Um, you can write about um, the things that I just said. You can do an ex situ approach, like I showed you here, um, and acknowledge in writing somewhere. Like there are overlaying organ systems throughout body. fact can cut them regeneration can follow and then you can get very science scientific which we love um, and and ask yourself Does this have something to do with the fact that they are acelomates? But here's the thing. Um, and a lot of students would uh, will make this mistake if, if I don't um, ask them not to. Um, you can ask the question and you should ask the question. Please ask the question and then follow it up with um, the reason why this has popped into, into your head. Um, and here I'm going to say regeneration. after severe, because that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being hacked in half. Would be a more complicated process and a more complicated three layer system. So um, if this is all you say about um, the phylum turbularia, which, which we spent a good uh, 15, 20 minutes on in lab, then, then you've covered it and that's pretty good. And if you, if you do something like this and neglect to say anything about the other thing we looked at that day, which was this animal, right here cestoda a whole nother phylum well actually no i'm not sure well, is it a phylum i think it might be a flatworm as well uh but it is it is not a a, a turbularian um so this is a tapeworm and we did this on the same day and if you do an, a focused piece on planarians and skip over cestoda, that's okay. If you're missing both, 
then hopefully you you you're compensating by looking at um, something else that we did that day in a lot of detail. You can also do just minor coverage of everything. Um, you could cover Sestota and Turbularia um, in one piece, the way that I did it with the true jellyfishes, um, Aurelia being the example, plus the, the Tinafore. You cover two groups in, in one little bit. So how, however you do it is up to you. The thing that we're looking for is, is attention um, and thought and um, a showing of absorption of information and that you know how to prepare for an exam um, because that, that, is, that is one of the things that, that we'd like you to do. If it doesn't, if your lab reports do not serve the purpose of helping you prepare well for an exam, but they do show um, uh, intellectual strength and that you are paying attention to what's going on, then, then that's just as powerful, if not more powerful, grade-wise than, um, than creating a good study guide. So there are a number of ways to make a good um, a good report, and that isn't always true with lab reports. But this isn't biochemistry. Uh, this is uh, com this is diversity and comparative anatomy. So you have a lot of room to. Uh, so you should figure out what your strengths are, and use that and do a really good report and I know you will. Okay, so moving on, more identification. What are these? And you could definitely get a station like this where you'd be shown this animal and this animal and ask the question, um, under what name are these two animals united, and you can say to, uh, to the exclusion of something else. And I word it in a more complicated way because um, I, I, so there are two ways to word that question. Someone could ask you, um, and, and th this is what you will get. You'll be asked what, this is what nearly all, uh, coordinators do, and um, and this is what Dr. Baker does most of the time. What is the phylum? And the answer will be Nidaria. I'm going to show you, this is a, a more of a teaching philosophy thing, but here's how I ask the question that gets that answer that I think is a little easier on the students and it gets um, it, it it allows you to to show more knowledge um, I'll ask what name unites these that does not Tinafra. So this way, you don't need to rem you don't need to memorize the fact that Nidaria is a phylum. You just know that it links these two together, but it doesn't include Tinafra. Um, so so that's why uh, I like it. It's because you you have to memorize one less thing, but these these questions get the same answer. They're asking for the same thing. So if you can answer this, um, then you can hopefully answer this. If you can answer this, you can definitely answer this. So, so, so what you're going to get, what is the phylum, um, 
is actually, I believe, a harder question than the roundabout, which is what name unites these that does not include Tinafra? So um, hopefully that, that's useful information to you. But you can be asked because we, um, we had slides on it and we have uh, jarred specimens. You, you could be asked, what is the genus of, of this? Um, and I'll, I'll give you a second. You can also be asked, what is the genus of this? So the answer this is metridium. This um, so metridium species hydra species. Um, so you can to report on this. Um, I would have mentioned at some point that uh, the important bits of anatomy, which are, are that they both share, pedisk, a stalk, a mouth opening, I'll go longer than an hour. Tentacles have nidocytes. And you can then go in different directions. You can talk about um, how they feed, um, which is to bring food into a gastrovascular, gastrovascular cavity, which is what this whole thing is. I'm going to highlight it. Why not? So all of this. gastrovascular cavity. Um, and that's all an Idarian has to work with, um, in part because they are acelomates. So the food goes in, um, it's digested, and then it comes out. Um, and there's, there's a little um, opening. I have a pet anemone, and it, it poops out its mouth. It has no choice. Um, you won't need to, to know anything about the gonads. Um, you should know pedal disc, oral disc. You won't be asked tentacle, it's too obvious. Um, well, gastrovascular cavity um, or, or pharynx. Pharynx is OK, too. Uh, both, both are correct, but I think in our slides, we mostly use gastrovascular cavity. Um, and you can go in different directions here. You can say, all right, I'm going to talk about um, nidocytes. The 
discuss NIDA site structure and function, um, which is a cool direction to go in. Um, so that's one direction you can go in. Um, let's see, another direction you can go in is to, to talk about that cavity. And um, so, you know, please don't write this, but poops out mouth. Poor K. Does that have something to do with the um, the acetylamate nature of it? Um, but don't stop there if you've already discussed that in terms of planarian, because here's something interesting you can say that would make your instructor super happy. Um, so acetylamate, unlike planaria. No extra excretory tubes framework. For whole body. So a planarian basically excretes out of um, any any part of its body um, where where there is an opening, um, but this this does not, um, and can think of a reason for that. Um, reason if the anemone had such a system uh oh right out of room this is the thing it could not have a strong body See the, um, now I'm going back over here and I'm circling something, retractor muscles. Um, this, this is not a very porous um, thing. The, the, the trunk of the, anem of the anemone is tough. Um, it will sting, sting prey, pull it in, and it has to keep it there. Um, they also need to contract their bodies if they, if they feel threatened. Um, they also move a little bit. Um, sometimes they'll release their pedal disc. They'll they'll drift. Um, they may contract a little bit along with the drifting. So if if it was full of holes, um, um, holes and and tubes, then it could not have a strong body. So, in conclusion. There are clearly different approaches and trade offs when it comes to excretion. in a steel mates. Okay, so I haven't done much today. I think I expounded upon, um, I think I did four or five of these. Um, if you do um, like 15 or so um, entries like these, 
then 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 that that would be very good. Um, if you're if you're not that confident that you can do um, this this much uh, properly, then you should do a lot more um, and and have have quantity um, compensate a little bit for um, for the depth of your content. You can also send it to me a little early. I say early. I don't actually know when uh, when it's supposed to be in. Um, I'm, that information may or, or may not have been released yet. Um, but you can get it to me at any time. Um, and I'll get it back to you as, as soon as I possibly can with, with time to address it. So there's a bit of time left, and I'm going to use it to um, not demonstrate any more lab reporting, but rather just silently quiz you on a few things. Some identification stuff, mostly. So this I'm starting off with a with something tough. What is this from? So this is from an organism, obviously microscopic. The lines are telling. Um, it's one of the shared derived characteristics um, of this animal. So you could be asked, um, you you won't be asked what is this animal. On, only that that's the kind of thing that I like to do um, is show you a part of thing and say, oh, what is this from? Um, but you could be shown the whole thing and asked, what what is this? Um, what is the name of it? It starts with a P. The, the structure starts with a P. The organism um, starts with an E. Here's something else. You should be able to, to name the phylum. But I don't think you're going to get this. Um, I think you're going to get a relative, because those are the, the ones that um, that instructor did a video on. Remember, um, during the, the lecture on Spoiler alert, nematoda, um, you saw two videos. And one of them was on um, Ascaris, Lumbercoides. So you'll probably be shown an Ascaris. But like an Ascaris, this is also a nematode. And you should be able to um, tell that this is the mouth. That's the anus. There's no postanal tail. And how does this animal um, relate phylogenetically to this one? Way the hell away from it, put it that way. Um, same with this, way, 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 way away. Same with this, way away. They are in, in different solar systems so far. Um, they are all animals, though. This one was a recent. It is a worm-like creature. Here's some else. So far, this is the most distant, but a little closer to this. Mm -hmm. Here, you could be asked, 
oh, you 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 should definitely know. Um, don't don't do the practical without knowing what these two are. You, you'll you'll have either both of these or one of these for sure, um, and you should name it by um, by the genus. I'm not going to tell you what they are, but um, this but this is a distinguishing feature. This is a distinguishing feature. Um, and these green chloroplasts are distinguishing features. And in this one, the cilia, that's distinguishing, and so is this right here. And it has an, and you really only need to know um, two parts of this animal, uh, this creature, and it's, there are these and this, and I'm not going to tell you what this is. And we did work in lab on, on these. Um, so you should, we actually did an experiment um, on these. So you can either, for your report submission, um, do, do it along the lines of what we, we did together in lab, or you can go in another um, uh, curiosity and, and instinct based direction uh, like I've been doing off the cuff right now. As long as it's quality, that's all that that's what matters. That's what we seek from you, especially during these these complicated times. One silver lining um, to to this quarantine business is that um, our criteria as, as, instructor, as instructors who are grading your work must change. Um, and they, they, they change in that they must broaden. So if, if, you, if you shine in a slightly different area but, and wouldn't otherwise be able to, uh, were we sticking to the original curriculum, now may be your moment. Um, so, so just keep that in mind. Um, positive. So here is something we looked at. We looked at a slide um, of these. So you can ask, hmm, what is the what is the name of this? And our slides looked very much like like this. Um, the the creature is the dark, and these are. It's a parasite. Starts with a T. Now I ask, what is this? And what is this? You don't need to know. Um, you do. You do need to know the scientific name that unites both of these. But you don't need to know um, a scientific name for this, which is centipede, or this millipede. Centipede is fine, millipede is fine, but the name uniting both of them starts with a name that you should, um, you should walk in knowing. And if, it, if that isn't administered in the lab practical, it will be in lecture. Um, what is this? What is this? Remember, Nostoc and Anabina and, spi um, and Spirogyra and Gliocapsa and Volvox. You're going to have to tell those apart. And the Spirogyra is pretty easy. The Gliocaps is easy. The Volvox is, is easy. Um, Nostoc and Anabina are, um, are the trickier ones. I'm not going to enlighten you at this time. Um, I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you figure that out. Oh, wait, let me get, that. Let me get the other one and at least put it, position it together. go. Okay. 
So there are these words floating around. Um, actually, I only have one of them here. Um, Anabina, gliocapsa. Here's something they have in common. Oh, actually, no. Uh, please disregard that. Um, another way to quiz yourself is to um, to look at the uh, look at the the videos of the lectures um, and your lab manual PDF and find clusters of organ vocabulary words and tell your and um, make the connection of what these what what are these connected to um, what would we attribute these to in this case you would attribute them something we have already looked at today. That. So these apply to this. Um, all right, so now I'm going to exit this. So I can talk to you guys for a little bit, see if you have any any other questions. And I'll do another one next Friday. See if I've gotten any updates about the due date. So, so no one's gotten anything about that. Um, I can't tell you for sure, but I can promise that you won't be surprised um, or, or underprepared because we don't do that. Um, we'll, we'll make sure you're all right. So I'm going to sign off. Um, I hope that this has been helpful. So a few of you have already um, sent me some drafts, and um, you can expect those back from me um, today um, so, so you can have at, at least a couple of weeks, I think, to, um, to make adjustments. And everybody have a good weekend. Stay safe. Oh, I have a question. It's Nava for reports. Um, you don't have to do all the labs. No. Um, no, you should do the ones that um, that we did together in class. Um, no, you should. Um, Nav asks, uh, can we just do the ones that uh, we weren't in class for? Um, and no, you should do a mix. But obviously not the seed lab. Like perhaps you can, um, even though we had, I think, four labs devoted to plants, um, maybe you can sort of combine those into a volume that would surmount to two reports. Um, John and Tool, I have my lab notebook. Is it similar to the format? Um, did you, I don't think you, you Oh, you mean your, your PDF lab notebook? Um, that, that is a great guide, um, particularly the questions posed in there and the empty boxes where you may include illustrations. Gariba asks, how many labs would you want us to submit our notes for? which is a completely reasonable question. It varies, uh, it's going to vary depending on 
um, on what kind of submissions you are making, which is why I advise you to, to send me a little bit of a draft and why um, it could be a sample um, of a draft. Like the, the, the thing I just did, that, that type of stuff, if you, if you multiply that by, um, by, by at least 10, perhaps 15, so lab notebook with our notes is not going to cover that. No, it, it, it might. You, you, should, you should show it to me. Um, and the reason why this is, we're, this is so open um, is for you. Um, it, it's, so, it's so that you can get a better grade on this lab course when you're not actually in lab. Um, so this has to stay broad in, in terms of PREA. A much broader, much more broad than it would be were we in class. Um, it, it's the way it has to be. Um, handwritten notes are great. That's fine. Um, you can you can photograph them. Um, and I really prefer a PDF. So you can um, put together a PDF document of your of your written notes, and that would be fantastic. And Dimitri, it should it should cover that. You're welcome. No problem. Andy, thanks for sending me um, a draft. Anything that anyone has sent me this past week, um, I'll, I'll have sent back to you by the end of today. Most welcome. Have a good weekend, everyone.